G'day Team St Albans, let us pray. Transform us by the renewing of our minds, open our lips to share your good news and open our hearts to follow wherever you would lead, Jesus, for you are the way, the truth and the life. Amen. Well, that first letter of Peter's today has some pretty controversial things in it um, and they need to be understood in the context of the culture of the day and in dialogue with some of the other things that are said in scriptures about believers' engagement with government and uh, defying some of the more malignant institutions of our culture and context. A helpful way to begin thinking about these things is the words by the Reverend Anthony from Rochi. He's got a Guernsey to speak on the cathedral um, YouTube channel and Facebook page in the service that they put out this week. So hop on over there and have a listen. His words are a good and gracious way to begin thinking about these things. I commend them to you. But for today, friends, um, I have preached about John chapter 14, I don't know how many times, at how many funerals, and it never really gets a Guernsey on a Sunday morning. So that's why I'm talking about it. Well, tonight at least, because here we are at the remains of a feed. It had been a very unusual and disturbing feed that Jesus had shared with his mates, the Passover meal, that night before he died. Because at the beginning of the meal, Jesus had kicked off by wrapping a towel around himself and then going around and washing all his mates' feet like he was a slave, like a freaking slave. It blew their mind. And then over a feed, you'd hope that he'd sanitised his hands after that, Jesus got all agitated. He got all cagey and said someone around that table was going to betray him. Well, that set the cat amongst the pigeons. They started arguing amongst themselves. Then Jesus came out with stuff about him giving them a commandment like he was God. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. And then he dropped the real clangor. The rock was going to deny him before the sun came up tomorrow. Deny him three times, in fact. This feed was like a roller coaster emotionally. Jesus followed that clangor immediately by saying, don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my dad's house, there are many dwelling places. If it weren't so, would I have said, I'm going to prepare a place for you? And when I've gone and done that, I'll come back and get you so that where I am, you can be as well. You might think Tomo and Phil were a bit thick because of the questions that popped out of their mouths in this little episode. After all, they'd lived in Jesus' pocket for three years, day after day after day on the road, and night after night as well. How could they not get it? You'd think they'd have joined the dots by now. And here Jesus was, at last straight up, completely open with them saying, you know what guys, if you're looking at me, you're looking at my dad. If you're hearing from me, you're hearing from my dad. If you're seeing me in action, you're seeing dad in action. And forget the law, I'm the way to God. Tomo and Phil were good Jewish lads. Belief was reserved for God alone, and the law was the only way to him. So no wonder they were confused as heck. We've got to give them some leeway there. But Jesus reckoned that despite all that, they still should believe, if not because of what he's said just now and over the last three years, but on the strength of the things they've seen with their own eyes, the most astonishing things 
Jesus feeding 5,000 people out of a kid's lunchbox. How is anyone going to do that? Not even the Church Ladies Guild can do that. They've seen him command the weather and it obey him. They've seen him heal people who were born blind. People who had suffered from horrendous illnesses for decades. They'd seen him speak a man back into life from the grave and they could smell the stench of the tomb. Hmm. Jesus reckons they should believe on the strength of those acts, even if they won't believe his words. Have you been with me this whole time and you still don't know me? Jesus asks you today. How many of us have come to church for years, for decades, maybe even our whole life, and yet we still don't know Jesus and we still don't believe he can back up his promises and do in us what he said he'd do. We can still say with the best of them, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary and blah, blah, blah. But we don't believe, not really. We don't know him. And so we wind up fearful, confused, demanding and refusing to pray for even the most minor things because we don't really trust that Dad can deliver on his promises. We don't really trust Jesus and take him at his word. We don't know what it's all about, says Tomo. Prove yourself if you're real says Phil. They're practically Anglican. And what Jesus said and did, there's no way on earth I could do those things. There's no way on earth I could say those things. Well, why not you? If you believe. Those dudes had their world repeatedly flipped upside down that night and in the days and years ahead. Just as you've had your life flipped upside down and probably will continue to have it disturbed in the days and weeks and months and maybe even years ahead. Hear the word of the Lord. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in Jesus. Jesus is astonishingly gracious. On that night, his suffering, his horrendous suffering and death was just around the corner and he knew it. He made these promises to people who would abandon him and deny him just a couple of hours later. People who would utterly fail him by the time the sun was coming up the next day. Yet he says, there's plenty of room with dad, even for them. He made sure personally, they were still welcome, despite everything. Still welcome to join them. And Jesus made sure they knew the way. Well, such generosity, such love. Jesus prepared the way for you. There's plenty of room with Dad, even for you. You won't find truth. You won't find life anywhere else in this life or in this world. In an uncertain world with an uncertain future, here is a very certain way through today. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Yet there's more, so much more. 
if you trust in Jesus, you've been folded into dad's life with him. You can do what Jesus did. And even greater things. Yeah, you. When people look at you, they'll see dad at work. Yeah, even you. Hear his words. See his power flowing through your ordinary human life, through your words, through your life and character, through the miraculous, and especially in your pushing through the suffering and injustice of life, just as Jesus did on the cross. The last promise made in this episode Whatever you ask for in my name, I will do it so that my dad is glorified. Some people really balk at this. It seems too good to be true. So many Christians don't dare ask for much, either because they don't think God answers prayer or because they think he's got bigger things to worry about than little old me. Are you missing out because you dare not ask? Concluding a prayer in Jesus' name, Amen, is done by many Christians as a nice way to finish up. But praying in Jesus' name means so much more, because praying, praying in Jesus' name means that Jesus himself would ask for that thing. Dad isn't Santa Claus, there to give you exactly what you want. Will it glorify him? Would Jesus ask for that thing? If Jesus would ask it, if it will glorify our dad in heaven, you can ask for anything in his name and he will do it. So what are you going to ask for?